controversial fatal shootings from sitting in on the grand juries that are investigating their cases. The bill's sponsor says officers would be able to testify before the grand jury, but could also face cross-examination. If they're going to go ahead and exercise that right, then they're going to be subject to questioning by the prosecutor and, of course, by the members of the grand jury, like any other witness. And the DA says the proposed changes would bring credibility to the grand jury process. Tonight, the athletics director for the University of Tennessee is addressing the mounting allegations of sexual assaults by student athletes. Dave Hart said today he had sympathy for the alleged victims and he called the actions an unacceptable act, end quote. His statements come a day after an attorney amended his initial lawsuit against the university, which accuses officials of fostering a culture of discrimination against women. During the news conference, Hart added that Tennessee athletes accused of crimes are not treated any differently than other uh, students that are facing similar charges. Our student athletes are treated just like any member of the student body, and they should be. The only difference that we preach to them on a very regular basis, they're the most visible university ambassador. The newly amended lawsuit includes two new plaintiffs and three new football players. Greeting you on your drive into work on this Friday morning. Tomorrow, the cold. It is cold tonight. We are going to be dealing with temperatures in the 30s. Chief Meteorologist Chris Holcomb tracking some beautiful weather That's for the weekend on the upside. That's what we like heading into the weekend. But for now, we're tracking a few snow flurries that are still out there. You know, we saw a few of these last night, a couple in North Georgia during the afternoon hours, and then a couple, a pocket of moisture still holding together. This is going through, it moved through Dawson County a little bit earlier, now moving into northern Forsyth County in the form of a couple of raindrops and a few snow flurries there. Nothing really major, but crossing over Lake near into Hall County. Uh, the temperatures at the surface are above freezing, so this isn't going to cause any problem, but just don't be surprised up to the north of us if you see a few flakes flying. Some of our community storm trackers have been reporting uh, up in White County. They saw a little bit of snow flurry activity there, and now some of that in the parts of Jasper too, and now it's pushing on down to the south, and it is moving into some warmer air. So again, no issues with that at all. In fact, you can see how temperatures are above freezing here. We're at 41 in Atlanta, and up where we saw some of that snow uh, flurry activity up around Gainesville and Lake Lanier, it's 40 degrees. Now, Blairsville is already at 32, but most of the moisture is already out of there. Down to the south, temperatures holding in the 40s. We've got 46 in LaGrange and 45 in Thomaston. Now, with the wind, it feels colder. I went to my daughter's lacrosse game between shows for a little while uh, this evening, and it was just raw out there. It feels like it's 34 degrees right now, thanks to the wind. 35 in Athens, 33 in Gainesville. Feels like it's 25 in Blairsville. And here's a look at that current wind speed. Those winds blowing about 13 miles an hour. Not as brisk as it was last night. And we're going to see the winds trying to die down just a little bit during the day tomorrow. But let me tell you, it is going to be cold. Temperatures in the morning. We're going to wake up right around the freezing mark. These are the wake up temperatures early tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock. We'll see 30 in Marietta. 31 in Duluth, 31 also in Peachtree City, and that's not the wind chill. With a little bit of a breeze, it's going to feel even colder. So we've got the really cold start. We get up into the mid 40s at lunchtime, and then by afternoon, this model is going 50. I'm going to say about 52 degrees for a high temperature. We'll have some 40s up to the north, even low 40s in the mountains of North Georgia. So on the wisometer, we're going to see a lot of sunshine mixing in with just a couple of clouds, but because these temperatures are so cold, we're not going to go up to a 10 or 11 yet. We'll go with the 9, a low of 32, and a high of 52 by tomorrow afternoon afternoon. The forecast track, not a lot of action on the forecast track tonight, as we will see tomorrow. Mostly sunny skies to start. A few clouds will mix in at times, but for the most part, a good deal of sunshine around, and that will help those temperatures to get up to the low 50s with that cold air in place. And Saturday's looking good, too. Plenty of sunshine here. So here's what we're watching as we head through the seven-day outlook. We are going to see a slow, gradual warming trend. It's going to be chilly on Friday, and then on Saturday, not as cold. We'll get up to about 56. That's still running a little bit below the average. We'll get back above average on Sunday with that high of 64 degrees and mostly sunny skies. We'll bring the wasometer up to an 11, then back to an 8 Monday with a few more clouds Monday and Tuesday with a 20% chance for a shower. High still in the 60s, and then the better chance for rain comes in on Wednesday. And then we cool down after that system moves through Thursday's high only at 54. And then beyond the seven day outlook, we will see another gradual warming trend for the March. fourth through the seventh. Temperatures will be near 60, but during that period, we'll see some showers returning too. Well, it's amazing. We, we were looking at that that bottom uh, section of the graphic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, March is here. It's incredible. How did that happen? <laughs> I know. Wasn't Christmas just here? Yes. All right. Here's what's trending tonight. How do you feel if you went to dinner and you walked out with a rare pearl worth $600? I didn't have to pay for it. 
No. Right? Well, no. I'd feel wonderful, right? And that's the reality <laughs> for one Washington woman. Lindsay Haas and her husband, they were out on a date at an Italian restaurant, and look at what she found. She bit down on this rare purple pearl that was inside the clam on her dish. Hmm. She says she didn't tell the restaurant. She took it home to do some research instead. What is it? It's a quahog pearl, mostly found along the East Coast. What's rare about this particular pearl it's nearly perfect in symmetry, and it's beautiful. But if you break your crown, that $600 pearl is nothing like the $1,500 crown. Very good mouth. point, but it sounds like she didn't have that happen. <laughs> good for her. She Instead, was very, she very she scored lucky. a new piece of jewelry. <laughs> <laughs> very nice. All right, after nearly a year in space, astronaut Scott Kelly is returning to Earth. Kelly held his final news conference from the International Space Station today. He's 52 years old, well, say, says he uh, plans to return to Houston, and then he wants to jump into the swimming pool. Uh, the second most of course, that's after he goes through a number of medical tests. But first, Kelly has to get ready for his return, and he is set. It's March 1st. And the longest ever in space of any human. Incredible. That's I, amazing. I wonder how long it will take him to, to acclimate. Yeah, yeah, very good point. It'll be interesting to hear from him. Uh, take a look at the logo. This is for Savannah's new minor league baseball team, the Savannah Bananas. Dumb. <laughs> it's cute. Savannah is a great town with a baseball history. How about making it indigenous to the area? I, I hear you. I hear you. It's cute. That's what I said. The name was chosen from a thousand suggestions from residents, so they like it. Other contenders included the seagulls, the party animals. You like those better? For some, it has an appeal, though. Mm. Mm. Uh, oh, oh, that was good. Do you have another one? No. Nope. No? The new team replaces the Savannah Sand Nats, which moved after a dispute over the aging Grayson Stadium. The company owning the new team says the name fits their brand for making baseball fun for all ages. You all right. clearly disagree with uh, that. I, I don't like the moniker, but I'm glad that baseball's back in Savannah. Mm -hmm. All right, they hit the field this June for their very first game. Still to come, we're getting you ready for Super Tuesday tonight. Coming up, we'll take a look at the candidates and break down their tax proposals. Police have now made an arrest in a quadruple shooting at a restaurant near the Georgia State campus. And an 11 Alive crew may have discovered a piece of evidence at the scene after police left. Authorities say an argument inside the J.R. Crickets restaurant spilled out into the street. Four people were shot. All were taken to Grady Hospital. Police recovered three guns, including one discovered by an Atlanta Alive crew member after a parked car was moved. Uh, sometimes the scene is bigger than what we initially get here and discover. So somehow, during the course of taping off the scene, they did not take the scene as far as they probably should have taken it. The restaurant's windows were shattered during the shootout, but the business replaced the glass and was back to serving customers by this afternoon. Tonight in Gwinnett County, police have a man in custody accused of killing two teenagers. He is 17 years old. His name is Quintarius Walker. He is charged with the murders of Jaquel Thomas and Angelique Bowman. The couple's bodies were found in a Norcross neighborhood a few weeks ago. Authorities say that Walker gave a statement to police that helped them wrap up the investigation. His arrest comes after the surveillance video was released, appearing to show one of the victims walking behind a man carrying a gun. Police believe that man is Walker. So far, police have not released any details about a possible motive. We have some sad news to report tonight. 11 Alive has learned an 11-month-old boy has died following an automobile crash that also killed his father. Gwinnett County authorities say Cameron Lowe passed away this week from injuries in that Lawrenceville wreck two weeks ago. Police said a Honda Accord crossed over to the wrong side of the road and hit the car Cameron was riding in head on. His father, 29-year-old Sean Lowe, was killed in that crash. Mm -hmm. Good Samaritans found Cameron still in his car seat. They pulled him from the wreckage. His mother and two people in the other car were also hurt and hospitalized. There was a GoFundMe page that has been set up for Cameron's family that has raised already $49,000 tonight. New tonight, the former president of a South Georgia bank has been sentenced on federal fraud charges. A judge ordered Gary Patton Hall Jr. to serve seven years. He was also ordered to pay nearly $4 million in restitution for losses due to the fraudulent loans. Hall is the former president of the Tifton Banking Company in Valdosta. Prosecutors say he hid past due loans from other bank executives. And in 2009, he obtained millions of dollars in taxpayer-funded bailout money. Still ahead, the battle over an Apple iPhone and privacy heads back to federal court. How the tech company is fighting back tonight against the FBI when we return. Tonight. 
This is new tonight. Two men are set to be sentenced on Monday for opening fire on Atlanta police officers. Derek Newell and Marcellus White were convicted today on a number of charges, including aggravated assault on a peace officer and terroristic acts. Police say the pair got into a gunfight with officers near Ponce in December. No one was injured and both men were arrested right after the incident. At the state capitol, the sponsor behind the derailed medical marijuana bill is now hoping a new bill will still advance the cause long term. Representative Alan Peake outside of Macon is calling for a non-binding referendum on a statewide ballot which would let you weigh in on whether to allow medical marijuana to be cultivated in Georgia. Peek says he already thinks he knows what voters would say. We've seen poll after poll that say anywhere from 70 to 80 percent support this. Why not put it on the ballot? See if this, when folks, the voters who are actually out there, uh, agree with that particular number. Peek's cultivation bill was derailed this week in the face of opposition from law enforcement and Governor Deal, but he believes a favorable referendum could be a way to give the measure new life. And make sure you tune in tomorrow morning to Atlanta Alive for our exclusive poll on the medical marijuana battle in Georgia. What do voters think about cultivating the drug in our state? That answer might surprise you. 11 Alive has followed the medical marijuana debate from the very beginning, and we will continue to bring you updates on this issue. You can see previous stories, including interviews with families impacted by the law, on 11alive.com. A long-anticipated casino gambling bill is showing some signs of life inside the state capitol. The bill would allow four casinos to be built around the state with proceeds funding the Hope Scholarship. Casino gambling is promising a, a huge infusion into the scholarship, which is hurting for cash right now. But the money is also a tempting target for those with interests that may compete with hope like health care. One area of government that always goes lacking that affects more people in the state of Georgia than just the border regions, and that's health care. The newly revised bill also increases the licensing fees that casinos would pay to the state of Georgia as well as the state tax rate. Now, we have talked with dozens of lawmakers about casino gambling ever since a, a bill first surfaced last month. That's Lieutenant Governor Casey Cagle. He told 11 Alive that casino gambling is too big of an issue to tackle between now and the end of the session. And as recently as November, Atlanta Mayor Reed told two gaming firms that he would not allow casinos to be part of the new Turner Field redevelopment. A Texas grand jury will decide whether Cleveland Browns quarterback Johnny Menzel should be charged with domestic violence. Manziel's ex-girlfriend, Colleen Crowley, alleges the former Heisman Trophy winner assaulted her at a Dallas hotel in December, then struck her as they drove back to her apartment later that night. Crowley says that Manziel hit her so hard that she lost hearing in one ear temporarily. So far, Manziel has not been arrested, and it is expected he will be released by the Browns in the next two weeks. In Nashville, the video that Erin Andrews says changed her life and robbed her of her privacy was shown to a room full of strangers today. Andrews stepped out of the courtroom as jurors watched the video of her changing room uh, at the Marriott. That video was taken by Michael Barrett. He altered the peephole of her room, then recorded her without her knowledge. That video ended up on the Internet, where it was viewed almost 17 million times. Andrews is expected to take the stand next week. Now to the battle over iPhone privacy. Tonight, Apple is ready to fight the government. The company asked a judge today to vacate an order requiring Apple to write software to unlock the phone of a San Bernardino killer. Well, meantime, the director of the FBI says forcing Apple to unlock the phone was the hardest decision seen in government, but it we needs to be do done. Apple argues the code could be stolen and data must remain accessible only to customers in order to protect their civil liberties. Next week now, Apple and the FBI face off in a hearing in Washington. First Flint, Michigan. Now it's Jackson, Mississippi is dealing with contaminated water. Officials say the water is not as dangerous as Flint, but there is a warning for pregnant women and children under five not to be anywhere near that tap water. Everybody should avoid hot water and run the tap for at least two minutes. Officials knew about the high lead levels for a while, but it took eight months to warn the public. State officials say they were following guidelines from the EPA. We've done exactly what the federal requirements were for, for a long time. And but you've looked at those requirements, and your evaluation is they're actually not sufficient. They're not sufficient, and we've made the change so that they, they will be more sufficient. So Jackson, Mississippi officials say that fixing the problem will take time and money. 
Meanwhile, parents are taking their children to local clinics, and they are also stocking up on bottled water. Wow. Tonight, there are two new travel-related cases of the Zika virus in our state. The Georgia Department of Public Health says one person recently visited Guatemala and El Salvador. The other person was in Colombia. Right now, there's no vaccine to prevent Zika. The virus is primarily spread through mosquitoes. If you happen to be traveling outside the U.S., health officials recommend wear long sleeve shirts, wear long pants, use EP EPA registered insect in repellents and stay and sleep in screened in or air conditioned rooms. Today, a happy reunion in Athens between the Southern University football player who is now paralyzed after a hit last fall and the UGA community that helped him on his road to recovery. Devin Gales and his family heading home to Baton Rouge in Louisiana and they received an exciting parting gift. The Triumph Over Tragedy Foundation says they are raising money for a fully handicapped accessible home. Fresh off his release from Shepherd Center yesterday, Gales had lunch today with some of the players and staff who were on that field when he suffered suffer that paralyzing hit. It was a tough one at Sanford Stadium. The Gales family say they consider UGA to be their second home and that today's send-off was more see you later than it was goodbye. They treat me like that, I'm one of them. Well, now I am. <laughs> the party we did, we didn't do a goodbye party, a farewell, anything. We just did see you later because we'll be back. He is a, an amazing young man and his family is wonderful too. Gail says once he gets to Louisiana, he plans to go back to school. He's going to visit some of his teammates at Southern University. He'll take a couple of classes and then he will continue with his physical therapy. Inspiring young man. He is. We're helping to get you ready for Super Tuesday. Coming up, a look at the presidential candidates and their tax reform plans. Chris? Keeping an eye on radars, there's still just a little bit of moisture left mixing in with the cold air, shaking out a few flurries well up to the north. A lot of that is falling apart as it gets closer to us. We've got very cold air to work with during the overnight hours and in the morning, but a gradual warming trend in time for the weekend. We're going to detail the forecast for you coming up. There are three constants in John Smoltz's life. One is people want autographs. Two, they want to shake his hand. And three, they want to give him either a trophy, a plaque, or, or some sort of medal. <laughs> Tonight, he received another honor. And also, he will talk a little bit about uh, a former teammate. Hmm. Interesting to hear about Andrew Jones. We'll be right back.